What we're going to ask, if I can have your attention. I watch out or I'm going to set Sue on you. <laughs> what, I, what I'd like to ask you all to do now is um, every table pick someone. And we're going to ask each table to have one person. You have one minute. <laughs> one minute to tell us the most intriguing the most important, the best idea, or the best highlight that came out of your discussion. And I know that's going to be really hard, because I know there were a lot. So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to pick someone, and then that person or you as a group decide what they're going to say. That's all right. But we'll make it, we're going to make it easy on you. Because okay. you, can, you can just talk to them and Gary okay. will capture you. So you don't have to stare in Okay, good. Thank you. Are they ready? You ready? Well, I told them 30 seconds. They got 10 more. <laughs> okay, okay. Emily, Emily, your table's next. Okay, looks like we have a table ready with our first report out. Okay. Um, good, you held that. <laughs> Our first uh, answer to the question was uh, about STM. Those are important. Those are critical thinking skills. And when working with low-income people, changing their mindsets and getting them prepared to uh, change their skill sets to move forward into technology skills. And connecting with manufacturers and employers from different job training programs. Okay. okay, good morning. Um, our table talked a lot in the first question about um, really being able to have a clear message around green jobs and then also being able, oh, I'm so sorry, my back is to you. Um, but really being able to uh, communicate that message to potential students of, of training programs. Um, I think there are a lot of exciting things that came out in the table, great practices that are going on but the challenge of communication, and particularly the communication of what a career pathway looks like, complete with um, certificates along the way. Vocational education does not need to be exclusive of college education. Um, one of the things that came up was the, the notion of an ATS uh, degree. And Mary mentioned that 30 credits of an apprenticeship can count toward it. And we really at community colleges can help define the remainder of that. Um, excuse Oh, it's uh, advanced technical studies. Mm -hmm. So it, it really is, is a hands-on, so it's really kind of can be uh, created. Um, let me check my notes from the next page. Sorry, I want to make sure I'm accurately reflecting our team. So two of the areas specifically that um, we thought that the Department of Labor can be helpful is first of, particularly for women, is first of all to provide a specialized pots of funding in this area where much the way that there's youth employment programs that though there can be dollars tagged for women and that those dollars really need to include um, money that can be deployed for uh, supportive services such as, uh, such as child care. Did I miss anything? Thank you. Uh, good, good morning. Uh, our table had uh, quite a lot of the discussion. We actually went to the second question first. But uh, <laughs> one of the things that we, we thought of and, and discussed was that we need to have a better definition, one, of what a, a green job is. We also wanted to have a, a concept where the people could see what skill sets they already had on how they can transfer those to what's available. Because a lot of people have the opportunity and the skills uh, set up to do the job, but they just don't know what those skill sets are. So we need to have a definition of what those skill sets for those new careers are. And we also, need, we also well, thought that we need to get away from jobs and go toward more careers. Because one of the things that, that I, I, we learned, I learned was that job is just over broke. So they need to understand that the opportunities available go from, from a bottom rung up to some of the more advanced uh, opportunities in that field are, are going to be great. I should, I should know that. Um, we, we too had a lively discussion and we had some interesting expertise that came together. I think the, the bottom line for us is the importance of telling the story. We had. Um, 
a, a conversation that started talking about youth learners and what we need to do in the high schools to stimulate interest in some of these non-traditional occupations. And then we later in the conversation emphasized the importance of communicating with the adult learners as well. Career pathways and ladders were um, equally relevant in both, but the tactics were, would be different. There were a lot of things percolating here at the table that might actually come to some fruition, some ideas about how to reach into um, the state of Ohio through some of the, um, the organizations that were represented. So that was really positive. And then I, I think um, just also making the, the learning relevant and making sure that there was a, vo a vocational orientation at the youth level so that people understood what the opportunities were and why they were learning it. And I hope that was good. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, our group was very dynamic. We covered one, two, and actually went into the, second qu the third question. But one of the things that we found, um, STEM education is very important in Ohio and throughout all of the states here. Um, we do have a STEM school in Cleveland that's in their second year. And one of the goals there is to educate not only the young ladies, but to educate the parents so that they no longer have that traditional career goals or job goals, that they actually have these young ladies and these young men go into areas that are untapped. Um, so that's that grain and that sustainability. Um, one of the things that I do is work with them to ensure that that's an awareness um, through emails, through local meetings like this, through just mentoring with different organizations and bring them into the schools. Because once our students see that the opportunity is right there at their fingertips, then they actually start to study it. If they see it just on TV or in a newspaper, they shine away from it because the reality isn't there. So that's one of the things that we talked about. Thank you. Good morning. Um, at our table, we spent a lot of time talking about women who are actually in the careers today and what's important to keep them in those jobs and to make them successful. And the key metric there was mentorship and how the mentoring conversation needs to deal with very specific um, situations that women will find themselves in today where they are alone in their careers and having to deal with that dynamics of the mixture of the male female world and the importance not only of having strong female mentors but also male mentors who can help explain and bridge that gap between the two different styles of being and doing and also about the importance of all of us to mentor young boys today so that they understand the dynamics of life so that we can start to undo some of what they're ingrained to learn naturally. Wow, that was, that was great. Thank you so much. Um, now, in your small uh, groups again, please discuss the second set of questions on your agenda. Um, the point of this, uh, there's only 10 minutes for this, so the point of this section is really to try and quickly capture some of your reactions and new ideas, not really develop whole plans, but kind of get your reaction to what's just been shared. So you have 10 minutes. Thank you. So as we've shared with you, Nancy is going to be collecting, one of the things that Hard Hat Women and with Sue Nelson's help, will be collecting all the information that you all are sharing today that will go in a report that we will send to Nancy at the Women's Bureau. She in turn will be doing similar roundtables in other states in the region and then uh, putting all that information together into a report to Secretary of Labor Hilda Solis. So it's really, I, I'm just incredibly excited at the opportunity to give this kind of input into something that is truly going to shape national policy. Um, so what we'd like to do now is that uh, Nancy has asked for an opportunity to hear from the whole group. We're going to be discussing two questions. We have about 10 minutes for each question. Um, if you would like to make a comment, we're going to use the city club style for anyone who's been to a city club lunch. If you'd like to make a comment or share an idea, we ask that you please raise your hand and one of our microphone holders, either Joel or Josh, will um, come to, uh, they'll you know, make sure they see you and they will come and uh, to you in which the order that they see your hands raised. We do ask you to be brief. We, want, we only have 10 minutes for each question, so we want to hear from several people. Um, and the first question is, how can Ohio be a model of inclusion of women in the green economy? And I will invite Nancy back up to the podium. 